Hello, and welcome to week two, part two of IPP 205, Introduction to Interpreting. This second part of the week, we're focusing on professional interpreting associations and certifications. The relevant educational objectives from our syllabus are the following. Identify professional organizations for interpreters and describe their purposes. List the various certification and licensing standards for interpreters. Describe the roles and functions of interpreters, transliterators, and how the profession has evolved over the years. And identify and describe various settings where interpreters work and explain the skills and knowledge needed for each setting. First of all, there's a difference between associations and certifications. They're often related, but they're not the same. For example, the RID grants the NIC, but they're two different things. The RID is the association and the NIC is the certification. There are many different professional interpreting associations which we would like you to look at, and we'll have a list coming up. And there are all different kinds of interpreting certifications for professional interpreters and you'll read about some of those as well. We'll also talk about settings and skills. Specialized settings and specialized skills are often related, but they are different. For example, court interpreting requires legal interpreting skill, but legal interpreting skills can also be used in other forms of legal and law enforcement settings. For example, in a police station, uh, reading somebody the Miranda rights or um, having an interrogation, those kinds of settings would require somebody with specialized skills in legal interpreting. And in the state of Arizona, they require a special legal interpreting license. Now we'll get on to the assigned readings. This graphic above is uh, cool, but has nothing to do with it. It just came with the presentation that I thought, hey, why not? Let's zip and zoom through the readings, readings this week. <laughs> First reading we'd like you to look at is on the RID website. Look at the RID generalist certifications and the RID specialist certifications. Pay a special attention to the current ones. We would like you to learn about the older ones just so that you can understand how the profession has evolved and that you might understand why some of the uh, more long-standing interpreters in the profession might have some older certifications that they can still lay claim to and they still keep up with their continuing education units. Then we'd like you to look at the page about educational interpreters so that you can find out about the history of how the EIPA became a part of the RID, how the RID decided to start granting certification to interpreters that had the Educational Interpreter Performance Assessment. Then I'd like you to look at an article that I wrote called Settings versus Specializations, Categorizing Interpreting Work and a writing regarding all of these different things that we've had you look at are referring to the article Settings and Specializations, Categorizing Our Interpreting Work, and the section that you've already read about the interactive model of interpreting in your book Sign Language Interpreting, Exploring Its Art and Science. What factors make one setting different from another? And what factors require one set of specialized skills over another? Also, referring to the RID generalist and specialist certifications, which specialized settings currently require special certificates and which do not? Finally, are there any specialized settings or skills you think practitioners should have certification for? What settings and skills and why? For example, you might want to look at medical interpreting. I've also collected a list of professional interpreter associations, which I've shared on my website. You'll see it on the right sidebar. And one of the assigned readings regarding this is to pick one association that none of your classmates has written about yet 
So look at Blackboard to see what's already been posted and write a brief description of the organization. Please don't copy and paste, just tell us as you would tell a friend. And if all the associations listed on my site have already been written about by one of your classmates, tell us something they haven't told us yet. Or find another professional interpreting association or a related organization to write about.